Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my new shop. It's often been said that the wood shop is kind of like a clubhouse or a man cave or woman cave or whatever. It's just a place that we love to come and hang out. Whether you've got a project going or not, it's just relaxing to be in our shops. So why not add some creature comforts? So if you've been watching the podcast at all lately, you've seen that I just did a major renovation in my shop. Evidence behind me here with the new walls. But one thing that I really don't like about the new walls is this bright white switch plate. I just don't like it. I much prefer something that more is suitable for a wood shop. Like this guy right here. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to make your own switch plates with scrap that you've got lying around the shop for that unique touch that only can be found in a wood lover shop. It's certainly possible to do this without existing switch plates, but generally you've got these floating around probably already on your outlets and your light switches. So don't throw them out. This will be the template that we can use to create our hardwood versions. Now, as far as the material, really grab your scrap, grab some interesting stuff. This is some teak that was actually a test cut for a resaw at the lumber yard. They were sawing it down and just kind of dialing in the thickness. So I picked up a, a couple of pieces that were about six feet long and uh, about a quarter of an inch thick and they're just, you know, bandsaw marked on either face. So for all intents and purposes, they're rough sawn. And this is perfect for your typical either single uh, bank of outlets or a light switch. For the double outlets like this, it's not going to work. So I had to glue up two of them side by side. And in gluing up thin stock like this, it can be a little troublesome because when you put clamping pressure on it, it's so thin that it wants to bow up. So I clamp it flat on the bench. A lot of times I'll put wax paper underneath it. And then you can put a clamp like a hold fast right down on top of it to keep that pressure down and keep it from bowing up. So regardless, grab any stock you have. You want it to be about a quarter of an inch thick. Use the existing switch plates as a guide. If I were to look at this, I'll see that it is just at about a quarter of an inch thick. So it's a good rule of thumb to stay somewhere around the same profile as the switch plates themselves. Now, I gotta be careful because I've got quarter sawn or vertical grain stock here. If I try to work too far back, it will split very easily. So I'm just gonna remove these little points. And then I need to focus on making the cross cuts or relief cuts here. I've got a number nine four gouge that very closely matches that sweep in the corner. Come in with a narrower chisel and just with the corner of it kind of nibble my way back Thank you. 
I could come in here with a smaller diameter drill bit and drill right in these corners, but I'm kind of committed at this point. And frankly, it's not taking that much longer to just come in with the chisel and nibble back like this. While we want to focus on keeping the walls of this recess plumb, it doesn't have to be perfect because I've got to come back when this is done and slightly hollow out the underside of this. If you look at a typical switch plate, you see how it's hollow on the inside. That's because the switches themselves, the outlets themselves, stick a little proud of the surface. But also with this all hollowed out, there is a better chance of getting a tight seal around the edge. So if this isn't perfectly plumb all the way back, by the time I hollow it out, I'll have that relief area that I need. There's that first recess. I just repeat all that fun chisel work right here on the second one. Now I'll just go ahead and drill out the screw holes. While I've got this clamped in place, I'll just go ahead and put the littlest bit of a counter bore here. I've got my second recess cut out, so I'm just gonna come in and test the fit. That's a great fit, but you can see it doesn't come flat against the wall because these outlets are designed to be just a little bit proud of the surface. And that's where I've got to hollow out a little bit underneath like I was talking about before. There are any number of ways to hollow out the backside, simple as just being a chisel. But I've got this really cool tool called the Travisher. This one's made by uh, Pete Galbert. It's a, traditionally a chair making tool used for refining the convexity or the saddle of Windsor chairs. All right, let's see how we did. Slides in and it comes up flush against the wall. So the last thing I want to do is just bevel these edges and give you that kind of rounded over look that we find with a typical light switch. I'm going to go with a bevel because I think, I don't know, I like the angular look of it a little bit more. Now I just want to apply a little bit of finish. I happen to have some store-bought clear shellac on hand. I'm just using that because frankly it dries really quickly. So after three coats of shellac, just some scuff sanding in between, I've got a nice high gloss finish to match the high gloss white plate that I took off. I also went and replaced the white screws with some black tip screws, just so that it blends in and looks a little bit nicer. So it's time to install it. I think that looks a lot better. Well, I've only got to make about four or five more. See you next time, guys.